your waiting for. This is about with George and Walt. All was broken down some years ago, with lots of support help from my maker. She's back in one piece, all thanks to the last bin, the box he made. What about Miss Starber? Sorry, Mr. Bump. No, sorry about your, just about my charge of war. You the shit is still in two. I'll get back to Oscar Nova and his friends later. Oh, then you're over going to take my picture of these guys. Mr. Moon characters were from a puzzle piece. Mr. Dejan was missing. I never learned. He'll turn out. Whoops! Forgot Mr. Bump needs a picture. Okay. That's enough. Let's have a look at the charge of what. Welcome back, old girl. <laughs> Clay? Where did this come from? Salver? Hmm. Nick must have bought it for his brother. Paint pad? Oh, <laughs> that's how Turkey was born. Oh, here's the block of clay in this packet. That's what she found. Hey, look! A disc of the whole the daughters keep on dancing from the top thousands. Here, he's not recording the music. It's copyright stealing, so we can't talk it. A tape about Oak Dog and a diff a diff from the neighbor Misfit Fans. We can't film them ever. Come on, Purser. I can't run out. Oh. Heh <laughs> heh. I've got some ads. Let's have a look at the charge of what. Hmm? Hey, don't shit me. Let's look at the charge of what, okay? Think the green dial rocket and the chain. Hey! Don't shit me, I said. Sheesh! Gentlemen and ladies from your choice, the George of Water Show, fully restored. There she goes. Oh, oh. Go. 
off a bird. Hey, Mara. Oh, there's someone looking at it. Ah. Bonner EX is also about steam locomotive. This model was built in 1935. So Original 1924 Barber and lost until 1964 on the North Mount Ferro Tramway. It has had several upgrades during its service life. And following this duration in 1981, it was deemed to be beyond economic repair in tentative total extensive corrosion of the fair box and barnisher. This the murder ward.
hurt. The kind of murder of mechanical de-doubled or fought in locomotive. Opened Italy in 1925 and was used on the Lake Market tramway until about 1965. Currently fitted with a large 1950s truck engine locomotive on loan from the collection of the West Coast Heritage Center Zeehan awaiting warmer weather for the painting. This is the inside of the club, but not a lot in. Oh, nice controls, huh? Eh? That must be the gear wheel for backwards and forwards. <laughs> now, where's the train? The Georgia Walk.
Just while we do the parading as Romeo just comes in, just a reminder about the safety stuff. Lots of excited children around as it should be. Please make sure they're not, not able to run onto the tracks. Um, as the train stops, remember not to board or leave a moving, moving train. Remain seated and be really careful. I'm going to shut up. And be really careful to know that, assume everything on the loco is hot. And these ends, please, no children are on the ends. No walking on the sleepers or the rails. And uh, only when the cage the loco driver. The most important thing is no running on the track. Um, we'll be back to uh, more train trips for the coming and going. In the meantime, wonderful season of spring. We'd like to hear some more. Thank you. This new driver we got. Oh, thanks. To go in the You want to ride on the footplate? Okay. He wants to ride on the footplate. Oh, not me. I'm going in the Just a minute, Chris, and I'll get you one. No, $2 each. Oh, I'll take a ride. Give it in here. Yeah. Oh, we're on it. Oh, we're on it. Graham, can we get somebody to get some wood for next time around? Don't you do it, but...
rub it on the shop of shirt. Shirt. It's all changed. The consumer remains so small. Right, Squire?
tip that we brought you up again. Another of our guests is uh, El oh, El Mama Bre I have a young Goodson, I was gonna call you Goodman. El Mama Goodson, who is your grandma your grandma was with Eric where he's opened in the road fifty years ago. And uh her dad was uh, George Bush and also drove the same. So thank you for coming down from Devonport and sharing that with us and some stories and we're to get some photos from you we think as well. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about today at some point is things like the um, rail ambulances. And you think you've got some photos of, of the, the rail ambulance. You think you forget about these things without roads. Graham's written us some lovely stuff about what these places meant, what this place meant, uh, locos meant for Tuller. Without roads, um, everything has to go in and out. Women have to go and have their babies on the train. God help us, the beer had to come in. And, uh, and um, sick people were picked up by the uh, by the rail motors and uh, taken everywhere. So uh, extraordinary history. I'll give you a quick uh, brief rundown of that, and then Graham Hawes, who needs no introduction, will tell us a lot more about the uh, this loco and the project to uh, get it back. But just to give you a history. Um, the mines were set up here in the uh, late 1880s to mine the ore up uh, under Mount Farrell. This was about the centre of the original Tuller, as far as I understand. And in 1902, a horse-operated steel rail line was built from the Emu Bay Railway, which is, of course, the, the line from Burnie, to Tuller. It was six miles, and the Dunkley brothers keep appearing in these histories. They built rail lines at various points. They had pubs and things. And in 1907, the line was upgraded and steam power was introduced in the form of a Krauss locomotive from Mount Lyle and an Orenstein and Copper one from Mount Magnet, a bit further north. The locos were second-hand and due to breakdowns proved to be uneconomical. The North Mount Farrell Mine Company, this one, um, decided to purchase a new engine and in 1923, we Georgie Wood, uh, a two-foot gauge fowler arrived from England. I'm not sure if it's said anywhere else, but my understanding is the tradition was to name trains after uh, celebrities of the time, and we, Georgie Wood, was a um, comedian, I think, or a singer, uh, um, in England at the time. Um, uh, thank goodness we don't do that now. Imagine who we could name them. <laughs> These days it would be dreadful. I hope in 50 years' time we're not setting Justin Bieber off again. <laughs> God help us. Um, he was joined the next year by his sister, Wee Mary Wood. And uh, many stories have told. And if you came to the play last year, it was the night before Christmas, the lovely play about Tuller written on the stories of people like Jimmy Powell by the lovely Jenny Steen, who's just decided to come to Tuller for the weekend from New Zealand. <laughs> Welcome back, Jen. Jenny told a lot of those stories last year. And the, one of the lovely ones was the code the Whistles gave uh, to, to give locals on their daily return to Tuller, um, alerting them of the different types of passengers on board. So there were codes to let you know if there were mine officials coming, unknown visitors, and of course a code to tell you if the constabulary were on board the train. <laughs> and uh, we, Georgie and we, Mary, faithfully served the mine, the Farrell Mine and the Tuller community for the next 40 years, until the 60s, until they were made redundant by the opening of the highway, um, as often happens with these things. So they operated, they were closed in the 60s and we, Georgie, went to the Zeehan Museum for the next 20 years as a static display. And in the late 1980s, residents formed the We, Georgie Wood Railway Society and we're going to hear more about them and the wonderful, passionate people who got this back shortly from Graham and uh, Peter. They retrieved the engine, they laid the tracks, they built the railway and, and the station and a tourist attraction was born. Um, we, Georgie, continue to give faithful service, albeit setting some local yards on fire with sparks from the stack, but, you know, there's got to be some problems. Um, until two years ago when it was decided that the boiler needed a major, major overhaul. It turned out the boiler needed to be replaced, and, and we've had a major reconstruction of the engine and the trucks. Um, that just completed, and with a beautiful timing for the, for the opening of the... Uh, commemoration of the opening of the road, we, Georgie, would his back. Pete... Peter Winskill, no, Peter Winskill has finished. Should I hand over to, Mr. to Graham Hawes, Mr. Winskill? Yes. We're a beautifully choreographed organisation here. Um, I'm not sure what title Graham has except the man who passionately keeps this thing going. Are you president of the We Georgie Society, Graham? And many others. Jump over this side, mate. You can, some people can see it. 
the man who among all might be second. Brian Morris. Thank you. Well, it's been a, a marvelous day, especially with the band here. I've never seen a third in any show. Oh, I can always cream. I can always cream. I can always Well, it's been a beautiful day, and uh, especially with the band, they've done us proud. Uh, I don't think we've ever had a, a, a band of this size on the uh, on the circuit, and it's been great. Uh, thank you all for coming down today, or coming today. Thank you, Chris. Um, <laughs> it's been marvellous that you could come and share this special moment with us. And it's been a long journey, I assure you. Uh, the Loco has been out of action uh, for just on three and a half years. We pulled it apart in June 2010 with a view of putting new tubes in it and maybe doing it for a pair or two. But how long can one get? Because uh, what was needed was uh, a whole brand new boiler. Now, <clears throat> boilers don't come cheap. And when you've got the boiler off, you might as well get on and fix a lot of other things that you've been putting off for years. So we've been getting on with that over a long time. And uh, what you see today is not quite the end of that journey. Because... Um, what, We haven't quite got to the end of the journey, but we, we will get there over the next few weeks or, or months. Um, the lads from Willis Railway came along last night and uh, helped paint, paint the loco, and it looked really brilliant today. But uh, the journey started nearly 12 years ago when we realised that uh, something was a little bit remiss with the boiler and that you should start thinking about this replacement. So a, a, a program was set in place. It was pretty slow at the start. And uh, thanks to um, um, Mrs. Vanderfeen, um, she got some urgency into the deal and we got going. And with the realisation that we needed some at least $50,000 uh, for a new boiler, um, we, had, we found we had a long way to go. <coughs> we also uh, need to recognise that uh, a lot of the money for this project and it was raised from donations, uh, from grants, and, uh, and so on. In all, I think we've spent something like $75,000 getting the locomotive back into business. You ought to remember it's had a uh, real through park roll, all new bearings, uh, cylinders have been re -bored, uh, and that's one of the reasons it goes so well today. It's got a lot more power now with bigger pistons and rims. And with a new boiler, we uh, can get much better performance because uh, it's operating a little bit higher pressure. Um, I'd just like to point out, I think, a few organisations and recognise um, those that have helped us greatly. Uh, and great on the list, I think it's on the wall over there, you can read it. But uh, we need to recognise the contributions of the West Coast community. Uh, it hasn't all been raising funds, it's been assisting the process. Uh, right from running a barbecue over here to uh, actually applying for grants. The, the most significant grant came from the Coast Community Fund. And we need to recognise their contribution. And in all, they gave us some $30,000. And that went a long way. And there were quite a few other significant grants from members, from the likes of um, the Manthos family from, uh, from the UK who came through about four years ago and uh, fell in love with the train and said that they'd like to help. 
And then a few months later, we got a call from a solicitor in Sydney saying, look, I've got this cheque, where would you like us to put it? <laughs> and that was brilliant. And I sent him an email the other day and told him what was going on, and they're going to come back in April and have, have another ride. So that, that's brilliant. Other, other things like uh, Progress Association, West Coast Heritage, uh, with the Zion Museum. We're, we're blessed with the fact that, even though it's broken down on us today, the old Romero loco has been able to be used with their, with their approval for the last uh, two and a half years. And that's great. Um, <clears throat> lots of other people have built the other railways around uh, um, Tasmania. Um, West Coast Council, Rosebery Mine, uh, and so on. It's not, whilst not everything has been uh, put towards the upgrade of the loco or the replacement of the boiler, lots of things have helped. Um, Venture Minerals gave us a, a, a significant grant as well, and that was used to improve the creature comforts in the workshop so that uh, we can work through the winter and uh, not freeze to death. I'd like to, on our list, there is one or two that we've uh, missed. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Mall of Foundry and Penguin, and uh, the guys from West Coast Wilderness Railway. The thanks also to uh, the, the Tuller directors, I'd call them. They're involved in everything, including here. Peter and Christine, Jenny and Ken. That's uh, been, been great. Um, but I'd also like to especially thank um, Chris Hibble and Barry Turner for, for their contribution. They've been here almost uh, every weekend for a, a long, long time. I think Chris has been here, has been, uh, hasn't had a day off in 10 weeks. So, enough of that. It's, the end of the journey, as I said, um, we're glad that you're all here today and uh, we hope that you can uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the day with us. Okay. One final bit of officialdom to do, Graham and um, Mrs Bowie, have we got a, a ribbon? Are we going to do something there? Are you going to um, break a piece of... Champagne bottle on it? Mrs. Barry, how are we going to relaunch this? We've got a ribbon. We've got a ribbon. Oh, I haven't got a ribbon. Hopefully somebody's got a ribbon. Um, our, we're too busy concentrating on a train if you've got a bit something like a ribbon. We've got a ribbon? Yes. Can we, can we stand clear of the track? We've got to bring the low back. Okay. So we can cut the ribbon and let it dry out. All right. So the loco's coming back this way. Everybody stand clear. And then we've got something, so we of course need the guest of honour to come back into uh, the place. The guest of honour has been relatively quiet, so I've been on there a couple of surges with steam. So we, Georgie, our guest of honour, um, Mrs Edna Bowie is going to um, do the honours for us, long time Tuller girl. Her dad was Vic Horn, who was Chief Engineer. Um, and Edna Bowie was the Chief Engineer of the Mine and the Chief Engineer of the Mine. to do with the railway, so it's just delightful to see many of our senior citizens coming back and making sure we've got those lovely stories. You want to say something, Brian? What about you, Mr. Bowie? I'm imagining somebody in your family. Do you want to, want to say something here? Go on. You're going to tell us something? Thank you very much. It's great. Oh. Uh, Jimmy had news the other day. I have gone today. Yeah. I would like to congratulate the whole of the talent workers, the, the progress, the We Georgia Wood Committee in particular for the, all the money they've raised, the work they've done to put this, our little baby back. 
Thank you all very much for attending too. It's been a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a photo of you and your mum? Right, do you want to move forward or do you want to like this one here? Um, young sister, I'll give you a photo.
there. <laughs> this is her shirt, ladies and gentlemen. The cost is getting her better. Give me another bar. Look at her fun or not. She's done the same thing as Peter Sander. <coughs> Some people say it's called a diesel. Oh, the kitchen is steamed up. Oh, bonkers, it's brother. Another display chain on the chain on the back of her. That's very hard. He's putting in the pipe on this water tower. That wooden barrel. This must be a, a truck. But, oh, it's too heavy for one human being to push. Carriage is worse than the engine. Okay. 
It's a chimney on the shed. It's coming from the George Wood. Water from Jane, not sort of off a drinking. Mm.
Now they're taking out the coke. Not where. You'll have to help him, Tom. 